Let's talk about connections. So in steel, connections are typically either bolted or welded or some combination. But in the old days, we used rivets. So in rivets, we have these steel elements. They're joined with this little rivet right here. And we put it in an in a oven, and then we're going to heat it up and then we're going to uh, toss it to the person who needs it, and then we're going to take the other side of it, and we're going to take a pneumatic hammer and kind of hammer it down like this. Which type of steel bolting technique puts the bolt in tension? A bearing type or a slip critical type? Go ahead and hit pause. The answer is a slip critical. Now, if we're going to bolt steel together because of its weight and because it's usually for a really important purpose from a life safety point of view, we're typically going to use high strength bolts. And there are two types of these high strength bolts. Uh, one is called a bearing type, and that one holds it in shear. It holds back the gravity loads, and it's uh, tightened to a snug fit. The other is called a slip critical, and this one is super tightened, so the whole thing kind of squeezes together and operates in tension. Typically, the hole that we're going to bolt, well, typically, okay, so what we're going to typically do is we're going to do some stuff in the shop, often welding, and often to one member, and then we're going to bolt it typically in the field. So we'll weld part of the connection in the shop, and we'll bolt it in the field. And to make the connection, we'll typically use a third thing. So there's two elements of steel, and there's like an angle between them, or two elements of steel, and there's some kind of a plate between them. And, and again, one of them is welded in the shop, and the other one's typically bolted in the field. Now the hole typically is 1 16th inch larger in diameter than the bolt itself, so we have a little bit of tolerance. And there's an assumption that if we have a bearing type, there'll be some movement assumed, that if we just tighten it in a regular way, that one will slip a little bit relative to the other. In a slip critical bolt connection, we're going to squeeze it so tight that we're going to assume that there's enough friction on the bolt that it's going to resist any kind of shearing movement. Now, sometimes we need a bigger hole for tolerances, so we'll use a slotted hole. And the slotted hole is, you know, elongated. And of course, if we use a slotted hole, we're going to need a washer to keep the whole thing in. But washers may be required even if we have a non-slotted hole to prevent tearing. And tearing is called galling. G-A-L-L-I-N-G is the word for when steel tears. Now, this is, I was giving a seminar on this topic at AIA Miami, and this is a steel plate steel staircase they built, really beautiful one. And if we kind of zoom in, it looks a little bit like this, and you see all these welds. So here's my question about the welds. Here's my question about the welds. Which type of weld is this? So we're looking from one side over to the other here. The answer is it's a double fillet weld. So we have fillet welds, and like this and like this. And we have double fillet welds where we're going kind of on both sides. We have single bevel and double bevel groove welds. We have V groove welds. And we have puddle welds. So the one we saw here is a double fillet weld. You can see because they did it to both sides. This right here, this is the blank of a steel member. Is it the flange or the web? Go ahead and hit pause. The answer is it's the web. These two things here are the flanges, and this is the web. This is most likely a blank. Is it a shear connection or a moment connection? Go ahead and look and try to decide. The answer is it's a shear connection. So for purposes here, we can assume a shear connection just handles gravity, but a moment connection handles bending. And so we can interchangeably use shear connection, hinge connection, pin connection, and it's less expensive. The other flavor is a moment connection. In a moment connection, if we load it, it's going to pass the moment on. Moment connections are more rigid laterally. Shear connections are easier to put together. So that particular shear connection is going to be put together like this. And it'll look something like this in practice. Now this is a, like a, um, a steel assembly that's what we've done here at Virginia Tech, and it's got like just about every kind of normal steel connection you can have. So let's talk about some of those, right? So which one of these is a moment-resisting frame? 
and that's where we're you know going to talk a little bit more about steel and about shear and moment connections because shear connection looks like something like this. So if we if we have a column that's attached to a beam, and there's a shear connection, if there's any bending in the beam, the columns stand straight; they don't bend. And if there's forces from the side, either from wind or from earthquake, that's a bit more of a problem. In a moment connection, if there's a, a force applied to the beam, it's so rigidly connected to the uh, column that any bending on the beam will induce some bending in the column. So generally, if we're going to engage the flange up here, you see as welded, and the flange down here, you see, you see as welded. If we engage the flanges as well as the web, we're typically talking about a moment connection. We're talking about something that can resist lateral forces better and passes bending on from the uh, beam to the column. So if you kind of picture it, you can stick your arm straight out. Go ahead and do that. Stick your arm straight out, right? Now, if you stick it straight out and you're holding on to the wall, you can essentially let your shoulder relax a bit because you no longer have a, a moment connection. You can have kind of a pin connection. So anyone who pushes on your arm is pushing down, and your shoulder can resist that. If, however, I ask you to stick your arm straight out and you don't touch the wall or grab onto a, a handle on the other end, then your shoulder has to resist the force of the bending. And so it's kind of a beefier connection. So almost any time we, there's a, there's a notable exception, but almost any time we engage the flange, like here we have with welding, then we're, we're talking about a moment connection. So this is a moment connection, and this is a moment connection. You see here we've bolted through to the flange. This, by contrast, is a shear connection. It looks like it's connected in three points here, and then it you know, could maybe withstand some moment, and it can handle some moment, but for purposes at the scale of the forces that are on buildings, this is essentially a hinge. And so even though there are three right there, it's really a hinge. And so we're gonna call this a shear connection. Gravity loads are passed down from the beam to the column, but bending loads are not. This is a different shear connection. Again, the web is engaged but the flanges are not. This is the exception to the rule. This is called a seated beam connection. The web is not engaged. The flanges are both up and down, but rather both the, the bottom of the bottom flange and the top of the top flange is also engaged. But it's done so in such a kind of a meager way that essentially it acts as a, as a pin connection. And so this is a shear connection even though it uh, looks like it's engaging the flanges.